Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Anais Guillem. Uh, I will present on behalf of uh, uh, Jed and Nicola, uh, that are my colleagues. Uh, so I will talk about uh, the difference between uh, standalone photoscan processing and photoscan cluster processing, and the problems that it can uh, involve. Uh, first, uh, I would like to give you uh, some kind of background. Uh, so we are all working at the Hive, that is the Heritage Interpretation Visualization Environment. It's a lab that is at UC Merced at the University of California. Uh, so uh, I joined the lab um, uh, last uh, this year, and um, so I joined projects that were already running, and um, I work uh, with Jad and Nicola. And uh, so the question was. As, uh, as archaeologists, we are using a lot of photogrammetry, especially with Photoscan, uh, because it's, it becomes the norm, because it's quick, it's efficient, it's robust, whatever, even the quality of your data. And, uh, but probably you also um, encountered uh, the limits uh, in the processing and potentially problems in your documentation process. So we all experience that. No, not enough memory or uh, it crashes, you don't know why. And uh, so it's just, um, so for a single system we can use, uh, let's say until 500 pictures but after that, you need to shift to cluster processing. And I don't know if some of you already tried to uh, process data with the cluster. Anyone? Wow. <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, so it's a, it, well, it's another, another step. Um, um, no, sorry. Uh, so, um, what is happening when you want to, uh, to, to process with a cluster in Photoscan? It divides um, uh, your chunks into small projects and it, it distributes uh, them over the network file system. And uh, so, it's running different copies of Photoscan. So, um, even if you have like a small project, it is going to use only one node, but if you are if you, um, if you have a project with thousands of pictures, it will, divide, it will divide them across the nodes. So this is the theory. <laughs> um, so in the case of a crash, uh, the majority of the processing uh, will remain intact and the progress will uh, carry on. And when a node crashes uh, and becomes uh, non-responsive, uh, non uh, the task is restarted in another one. So basically, you encounter much less, um, uh, much less, um, uh, you can, uh, you don't have to restart man manually uh, your process. So the experiment um, happened with, um, this experiment happened before I arrived. We had a, a 4K video uh, <coughs> that was acquired with a drone. Uh, after a few decimation steps uh, to reduce the size of the data set, we still kept uh, uh, first 4,000 pictures and then 2,000. And it was um, processed with a cluster of eight nodes. So it's, the process worked. But um, then, one year later, uh, Nicola, uh, my advisor, asked to uh, process something else, and I checked on the server, I checked in the different folder server, and asked around, and people are like, no, we don't have documentation. So um, what happened is no replicability of uh, this, um, this step, and even worse, the, the server and the cluster was um, the cluster didn't exist even anymore, so we had to set it up again. So that that is a kind of the worst 
a case scenario that you can encounter. So that is really much sometimes what can happen. So um, I'm very happy today that we could see that um, um, the previous presentation showed like very um, um, the documentation of the work step by step in uh, notebooks uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good practice and uh, here in that case study I could say that um, the need of metadata and paradata documentation is, should be a, a, a necessary step in uh, all the research work and I would like here to show you this um, uh, diagram that is um, the workflow that we um, on which uh, I worked previously but that we try to implement now in our uh, web, uh, lab policy and especially uh, the step four that is about the data processing um, and again uh, just um, that the, the cluster is useful for a huge data set but it's completely inefficient on some data on the small data sets because um, depending on the on your case study and uh, your uh, your picture uh, you are not probably if you are just documenting a small object it has no uh, interest to uh, to set up uh, a cluster so it's really important to see what are the needs um, of your processing so just um, to finish um, I would like to uh, not um, having wild experiment without documentation for future tests. That is really my bigger wish. Uh, and um, also to um, adapt uh, feedback and improvement of data quality check in our workflows. And um, perhaps something that we don't say enough, but um, the collaboration and the workflow is not just in the digital and the technical uh, elements. So it's important to have this uh, documentation of your work, uh, like uh, the notebooks or any other kind of documentation, but it's also very much in real life. And I would like to mention that um, if the cluster at some point was removed, it's because of an internal in a personal problem between one undergrad and the IT manager of the infrastructure. So to avoid all this problem, um, then th the, the quality of the, the collaboration is not just in your digital and the quality of your document, but it's very much in your everyday um, ability to talk uh, with your coworkers. And of course, the training sessions are necessary for all the the um, of all the new uh, members for the lab. Thank you.